So things start with the most uh, high resolution picture you can get of the subject you want to take um, and get cut. Uh, so once you've got it loaded in as a photograph, it's just a normal JPEG on my phone, um, you can zoom it in with the tool that's built into the mobile app and use the um, special feature that's not actually on that once you've cropped the picture in um, to automatically select uh, the background and delete it. Um, so here I'm now checking to see if there's any artefacts in the picture, which there are a few, so I'll then go back in, zoom in a bit tighter, and there's this white border around the six here, which I want to get rid of. Uh, so I've done that, that just tightens up the shape, and um, if you've got fuzzy lines, then the cutter will try and replicate that, so you don't really want that. And that's looking pretty good now. So the next thing to do is to save that, and uh, I do Storch 6. Uh, so you can find it when you want to bring it into the program. Once it's into the program, you can do um, a few more things to it then. So the first thing to do is resize it because it will come in at the actual size that the picture was. As you'll see here, it's quite a lot bigger than the ones I've got in the background, which are already sized appropriately. Uh, so this was easy uh, as I just had to measure the um, decal that I'm replacing, which happened to be a height of uh, 1.5 centimeters. So you can put that in. You can also do it in inches. And then you can line them all up and there's an automatic feature, those lines that appeared there, uh, centre everything. Uh, but obviously we don't need the six in this instance because I've already done it, but that shows you how I went about making the numbers. Then when you've actually got your numbers in, you can put a rectangle border around if you wanted to do a cut and have it as, so you can peel off and do a mask. You can also duplicate it and do as many things as you want to do in that program uh, to get things sorted. So once, so once you're ready to actually uh, cut, you need the special cutting mat that comes with the uh, Cricut. And um, I'm just laying down the mask here. Um, I picked this up at Telford. I'm not actually sure what it's called, but it's, um, it's the standard one and uh, it's very easy to find online. So once you've pressed that down onto the sticky mat, uh, you're ready to load it into the machine. And um, then it will go about cutting it for you. So uh, this is it here, starting to cut the um, circles which is easy, and then it will run through the numbers as well. Um, the more complex the image that it's trying to actually cut, um, the more time it takes, the more you've got to be a little bit careful about making sure everything's um, sorted and, and set down correctly, um, especially with this masking film. It can lift a little bit if it's not on um, nice and level, so it's worth taking the time just to make sure it's all where you want it to be. You can also play around with the cutting depths as well. This, I think, is just on uh, paper. I think it starts with paper and then goes to vinyl. And I think I'm on the one uh, section into vinyl. Um, but what you, you know, the deeper the cut, the more it's going to go into the material. And we want to just cut through the mask and not go into the backing paper. And now we can see the effect. So there's the four, which is very uh, crisply cut and um, looks pretty good and the rest of the numbers are all lined up there there we go hopefully that was of interest i mean this isn't for everyone um but it does it, it gives you another option as a as a modeler now um the cricket machine that i used um i obviously would not expect anyone to really go out and buy one of them certainly i wouldn't have for the amount of masking that i do over a year i probably print five or six masks sheets um for when when they're needed across the year but it's actually um it was a joint purchase and i use it for a few other things but it's mainly used uh is for crafting with my other half who likes to do um crafting so from that point of view it made sense now if you were going to go into this from a modeling point of view there's two key pieces of information uh first off uh, there is a Facebook book group that um, you really should join. So I've put the link in the description below and that is dedicated to um, creating masks on the Cricut and um, Silhouette machines and, and anything else that will cut it uh, for scale modelling. So it's a good group. It's run by a, a good bunch of guys. It's it's really well sort of, um, I mean, there's no messing about it now. It's about cutting masks and, it, you know, it's straightforward and to the point. So it's well worth checking out if you um, are at all interested. Like I said, the link's in the description. And also, um, I think the cricket is actually a little bit um, restrictive from what you would want from a scale modelling point of view. I've not explored it enough, but looking at it just on the face of it from what people are using, it seems the Silhouette machine is a lot more user-friendly from a scale modelling point of view. I must admit I find it quite difficult to do anything other than basic shapes. 
or things that I can get clear pictures of on the cricket. If you were going to do the Condor Legion roundel, like we were discussing in the um, Condor Legion um, boxing of the Edward 109 that I mentioned, where the roundels are wrong, it's a simple enough process to print those, and um, you could do them on a masking sheet like this, and, and that would be no problem. But it is slightly more complex, so where you'd, I mean, what you'd have to do is um, make sure that the cross is correct, then merge a circle with it in the template, and it gets a little bit tricky. In the past, I've not felt like I've, I'd like to do things a different way than the program would let me. But like I said, I'm no expert, so if it's something you're interested in, get on that group, ask the guys some questions, and um, see how you get on.